Buddy, this is Beetle Five coming at you with another one of my reaction videos. Today I will be reacting to Crash vs. Spyro Death Battle. Now I am super excited for this one. This is another one of those fights that I've requested for a long time now. We got two of the PlayStation One's biggest heroes. I played so much of both Crash and Spyro growing up. I I, I grew up with both of them. They're just the best. If I had to pick of who was my favorite though, I would definitely have to say Spyro. I feel like I connected more with his games than I did with Crash. As to who's gonna win this fight, that's a close. That's it, it's a close decision because they're both so similar in what they do. But I'm gonna have to edge my vote towards Spyro because I feel like he has accomplished a lot more than Crash has has before. So, I'm going to have to put my vote for Spyro. So, let's just watch this. this. I'm so excited for this one. So, let's just fucking do this. Here we go. Yeah. In the early 1990s, they host <laughs> one of the biggest battlegrounds the world. Oh, Super Scope. <laughs> The console war. Sega versus Nintendo. Nintendo and Sega's mascots were left in a merciless duel over the gaming throne. But when the smoke cleared, a surprise third challenger was rising. The to PlayStation. The, top. the Sony PlayStation. And it didn't have just one mascot, it had two Crash Bandicoot, the mutated marsupial from Down Under, and Spyro the Dragon, the powerful purple hero of the Dragon Realm. He's whiz and I'm oh man, <laughs> with Laura Croft and Sweet Tooth. And skills to find out who would win a death battle. Oh my God! <laughs> Listen, I admire another brilliant doctor of science as much <laughs> as the next guy, especially those with grand plans to take over the world. But I'm not Cortex. sure Neo Cortex makes the cut. Why not? He's an evil genius who made a mutant Aussie army of animals to take over. Oh, tiny sure. Kong. When it came time to assign a general for this army. Rillaru. Of all things, a bandicoot. A bandicoot? What? You're making that up. It's a real animal. Look. Oh, hey, it's kind of cute. How's that little thing going to take over the world? With the Evolvo Ray, Cortex did successfully mutate it into a powerful beast. However, when he An tried embryo. to watch the creature, he utterly failed to create his fearsome Bandicoot jump. rejected. Instead, he got Crash Bandicoot. <laughs> so Cortex threw him out like trash and Crash became his worst nemesis. <laughs> Conservation <laughs> status is endangered. Because <laughs> this Banda Crash is a few snags short of a party. Adopted by Aku Aku. His physical abilities make up for it. He's got parkour skills like nobody's business. Which is appropriate as Bandicoots are excellent jumpers, similar to their marsupial cousin, the kangaroo. He's got superhuman strength and can wow, Crash of the Titans. Keep on going like an energizer <laughs> bunny of pain. Crash can double jump in midair, slide incredible distances, and use Crash Dash to boost his speed. He's also tapped into Mojo, a magic substance that's basically life energy to <laughs> enhance his battle technique. He's got his Norris Roundhouse and Triple Dragon, but his favorite move is the Cyclone Spin. The super body slam, that's great. For the Death Tornado technique. Though this can leave him dizzy and prone to counterattacks. Still, these brutal moves proved incredibly useful for rescuing his fellow mutant bandicoot girlfriend, Tana. Oh, oh yeah, from the first game. She's like really hot, but also not at the same time. <laughs> I'm really confused. Uh huh. While Crash's <laughs> natural abilities were enough to save her, his future battles with Cortex would require Coco, his sister. Tools. Yeah, like the red copter pack. He's even got himself the unicorn of motorsports, the space motorcycle. <clears throat> what I the Wumpa Fruit Bazooka. To increase his firepower, his jetpack. A special bazooka that uses a naturally occurring and easily attainable form of ammunition. Wumpa Fruit. The same kind of fruit shooter that's on his power loader suit from Alien. Ha! Er, <laughs> <I'm laughs> it does, it does look like back. that. But why fruit? I can't imagine it's a particularly effective projectile. I don't know, Wiz. Remember that time I shot you with my potato gun? Uh, you were stuck in a coma for like a month. Wait, what? You told me I lost that month because my time travel wristwatch finally worked. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, where's Crash getting all this cool stuff? <laughs> he can't be building it all himself. He's pretty dumb. 
They're all thanks to his kid sister, Coco. Who's Crash, my laptop's dead. Make yourself useful, big brother, and get me another battery. Jesus. Wow, you went to quite a place. Oh, Crush. Hey, that was a good one. <laughs> like Aku Aku, his magical mask foster dad, who's basically a god. Lucky bastard. Aku Aku's magical mojo prowess is quite impressive. He's very protective of Crash and will often step in when Crash is in trouble. But not always. Wiz, why can he teleport across dimensions on his own, but can't teleport Crash very far at all? This is as far as I can take us. We'll have to fight our way to the robot's interior and save your sister. Well, perhaps his fatherly intuition is kicking in, encouraging huh. Crash to learn from Engine. His and become his own man or bandicoot. Yeah, maybe he's just being a dick. Well, <laughs> he can jack titans because they're made of mojo, but he cannot jack other creatures. Uh, that was up for debate. I, I was considering that. Rush. Crunch, yeah. Oh, did I say crush? Jesus, I meant crunch. Son of a bitch. Tiny the Tiger and the Mecha Bandicoot and Uka Uka. Aku Aku's evil twin brother. What? Just look at how well he holds up after taking 112 falling wooden crates to the face. And he's right back up like it didn't even happen. What a champ. Crash has endured an explosion of 23 crates of TNT all at once. Which, given their size, could potentially oh, engine. be a city block. Yeah. And with the help of Aku Aku, he even survived a crash landing from outer space. What the heck is up with his hair? This vessel was likely falling at 17,500 miles per what? hour. What show is this? Space shuttle's typical re-entry, which means the force of its collision would be equivalent to more than 2 million tons of TNT. Whoa. Wait, but why didn't Aku Aku just teleport them to safety? <laughs> I can't believe we're okay. Oh, are you kidding me, Aku? You know what you did. <laughs> didn't do. <laughs> but what's the saying? Any crash you can walk away from, right? Plus, given how easy it is for Crash's enemies to... <laughs> I remember that. Absurd durability is crucial. <laughs> well, Crash isn't perfect, but with his amazing abilities and a little bit of mojo, he's saved the whole world many times over. And after years of this, he even finally learned how to speak. Now let's go home and eat pancakes! Pancakes! <laughs> uh, yeah, that was that was that was quite amazing. <laughs> I preserved that. That's it. <laughs> At the end of Crash of the Titans. Oh, my boy Spyro. Special purple dragon born every ten generations, destined to be a hero of his age. The first three were the best Spyro games. Everyone after, I'm not the biggest fan of, because the PS1 was just where they really shined. Same for Crash. He shined mostly in PS1. Oh. Uh, well, that that's outside my expertise. I didn't play many of the Legend of Spyro games. Cinder, I know, I know some of it. I don't know all of it. Huh. <laughs> Interesting. Adopted brother Sparks. Reincarnated at every ten generations. Why do so many stories start with people just throwing babies into rivers? That's never a good idea. Huh. Wrong, Wiz. It worked out fine for Spyro. He was found and adopted by a family of dragonflies. And even without fellow dragons around, Spyro grew up to be a pretty good fighter. He's strong, tough. Voiced by both Kenny, is that, no, sorry, Tom Kenny and Elijah Wood. Without a dragon's parentage, Spyro remained mostly grounded during his childhood. But he got pretty good at using his head. Like That's the Spyro games I know. Stuff. You do not want to be on the other end of his charge attack. But one fateful day... Just press square. <laughs> during a game of hide-and-seek with his quote-unquote brother, Sparks, they got into a bit of monkey business and, in desperation, Spyro unexpectedly breathed fire. 
This huh. is Spyro's first hint that he was adopted. Hold <laughs> oh, no. up. You mean he thought he was an actual dragon? Oh my goodness. I can think of a few other hints like I don't know, any time he saw his reflection. This revelation prompted Spyro to go on a journey in search of his true home among other dragons. Oh, and Sparks tagged along to help find treasure and protect his dragon brother from harm. Not like he needed it. He's the chosen one, bitch. He's got a chosen one, awesome bitch. Fire, ice, and lightning breath, and earth. Yeah. After finding Light and dark aether and dragon time. They each became his teachers in the arts hmm. of elemental combat. Ignitus taught Spyro how to control fire and focus it into huge blasts. Damn. Voltaire showed him how to use electric breath to stun enemies and toss them through the air. Pretty sure in the first games he could shoot poison too. And fire ice shards. And Terador showed him how to use earth breath to split rocks and roll up into a ball. Spyro also honed his physical flight, claw combos, air launch, charge a dragakata. Speaking of which, Spyro learned how to That's interesting because in the first 3 games he was only ever able to glide. Damn. But all of this led to Spyro learn ultimate element, the convexity breath. Ether. Convexity. It's ether. No, stupid. Everyone calls it convexity. Is the name of the dimension that bridges the dragon realm with the dark realm. Essentially the spiritual light force of the universe. Wow. It's never officially named. Cinder too. Lead concept artist Jared Pollen has gone on record to clarify its name and properties. And he calls it Ether. Eat that boomstick. Don't convex me. Wow, someone from Deviant Art declared that. Ether Interesting. Ether is an extremely powerful element which binds the fates of the living and the dead. With Ether, Spyro pulls from the four elements to create energy which, according to Pollen, has power comparable to that of an atom smasher. Oh! The thing that shoots an atom around at light speed for all sorts of sciencey stuff. Yes, there are particle accelerators with a moving photon beam containing 362 megajoules of energy. Yeah, I said that. Uh, this beam can slice through a human skull in a nanosecond. Just like what happened to Russian scientist Anatoly Bogorsky when he stuck his head in one of them. What? Why the hell would he do that? <laughs> God, being Russian must be hard. Bogorsky <laughs> must be hard. Molecule thick through the skull, Iron Man. Which obliterated all matter in its path in an instant. Oh my While God. While he survived, half of his face around the microscopic hole in his head swelled peeled apart and was permanently paralyzed while he experienced the blinding light he described as brighter than a thousand suns. Hey Spyro, what was that about? Uh, I don't really know. I just felt like I had to hit it. And when I did, the power of a thousand suns surged through my body. Huh. Imagine if that beam was the size of Spyro's super breath. No, wait, you don't Whoa. need to. What is with Spyro he here? When he killed the ape king. Of course, Spyro's ether powers have other uses as well, such as curing his fellow dragon cinder of Malfor's corruption. Is he shooting ghosts at her? What kind of magic were they smoking when they came up with that? But ether is dependent on a balance between light and dark. Should a purple dragon fall prey to their own anger and hatred, they risk being consumed by dark ether or oh. nether, transforming into a blackened, rage-filled form. Spyro's a really nice guy, but... As Dark Spyro, he lets loose. Dark Spyro? I had no idea that was a thing. When Spyro is consumed by Dark Ether, he cannot return to his old self on his own. But with friends like Sparks and Cinder at his side, he's always found his way back. Through the power of love. I wonder what this fight is going to have Sparks and Aku and Aku. With all these powers at his claw tips, Spyro is a force to be reckoned with. He's pretty quick, outracing biplanes that can fly. Over I love that. That's Year of the Dragon. You have to have my favorite game. <laughs> Defeated Ripto, Red, Dark Cinder, Gaul, Lava Golem, and Malfor. So I'm electricity proof too? I knew my scales were impenetrable, but now this? Skylanders. Ugh. Look at the facts. Spyro once took a punch from this massive magma golem, which then lost its arm and replaced it with a cathedral tower. This cathedral is very similar in size to St. Stephen's Basilica. A Roman Catholic Church in Budapest, Hungary. But How the hell can you compare that? Basilica and adjusting for empty space, we can estimate the arm's mass to weigh over 400,000 tons. <laughs> Assuming a low-end punching speed of 50 miles per hour, that of the average humans, the golem must have hit with at least 1.9 million tons of force. Wow. And after getting all these powers, saving the dragons, and defeating the Dark Master himself, Spyro tapped into Ether one last time. To literally pull the exploding planet back together. What? <laughs> How the hell? How? 
Oh man. Power of love, magic of friendship, and a smidgen of prophetic destiny. Prophetic destiny. Ah, you're the dragon. Wait, well, we gotta find the rest of the eggs by ourselves. <laughs> oh, you! Spyro's gonna win this fight. No, let's not do that because Spyro is totally gonna win this fight. Even they were telling me more about him than even I already knew. I mean, I only knew of Spyro's powers from the first three games and and the crash of like the first three games and then of Twin Sanity and also. Was it Crash of the Titans? That was my knowledge, and even all that, I'm thinking, okay, Spyro's definitely gonna win this fight. He's got much more power than Crash has. Even with Crash's like m mechanical uh, devices and shit like that, Spyro has so much more godlike power to wield. And if Sparks is gonna be with him, and Aku Aku is gonna be with Crash, that was a Crash can gain temporarily invinci temporary invincibility with Aku Aku. And me, Spyro can and to become Dark Spyro, and then Sparks will be able to release him afterwards. But I mean, if they don't have either of that, then Dark Spyro might be oh might lead to his doom. So I, I I'm still placing my money on Spyro though. So let's see this shit. Here we go. Oh my god. Oh my god. I just I love both of the games. <laughs> I would fuck that up so many times and miss it. <laughs> His eyeballs were like dragged along. It's so funny. They they look like their original models. That's so great. Weird. Uh, what are you doing? <laughs> it is Sparks. It is Sparks. That's exactly what he sounded like. I remember. Oh! <gasps> he just he just fucking killed Sparks. Kick his ass, Spyro! Get him! Destroy him! Whoa! Oh, the spin attack! Oh, his dance! I gotta love Crash's dance. Yeah, fuck him up! <laughs> Aku Aku! Oh! Oh, here we go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, look at him run. It's just, just like the mud. This looks like the levels where he's running away from boulders. Oh, no. His alien suit. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I love how it's incorporating all of his jumps and slides. It's so funny. Oh, boy. Wumpa fruit. <laughs> oh boy. Ice breath. Oh no, not ice breath. Looked like it. Uh oh. There it is. That is the ice breath. Oh shit. Oh, we got him. Earth. Oh. Oh damn, here he goes. Whoop. <laughs> Where do you keep finding these things? Oh, oh, oh my god, to the face! <gasps> Dark Spyro! Oh god! Oh. I really want Spyro to win this, but he's going to a point he may not return from. Oh! Oh, Aku Aku's invincibility! Oh. What? Oh. Uh. Oh, he won! He won! Yeah! Yes, yeah, Spyro! <laughs> I wasn't so sure about that, but yes! And his elemental arsenal gave him a much wider variety of attacks than Crash had ever seen in a one-on-one. <laughs>
even with his extraordinary puzzle solving skills crash could not jack spiral because yeah but surprisingly i always knew that nearly as one-sided as it looked on paper with the strength it looks pretty one-sided to me crash was actually stronger than spyro and really had survived impacts worth around two million tons of force i thought spyro was a bit more dur durable like they planned this all along to be Ugh. did have to lowball spyro's durability against the golem's punch However, both of them had shown durability, which far exceeded much of their attack capability. So, even with his gadgets, Crash really didn't have a good way to hurt Spyro very much. But Hell yeah. But the thing is, Spyro didn't have many attacks that could firmly hurt Crash either. They were both just too tough. Well, until Spyro used the Ether Breath. Yeah. Literally break even Aku Aku has been defeated or overpowered by forces far weaker. Huh. Haha, <laughs> it's Spyro! Hell yeah! I really very happy with this one. Really wanted Spyro to win. Thank you! I was very happy with how this fight turned out. I think I would have been happy either way, but very happy with this. No way! Sora! Sora versus Pit! It's finally happening! <laughs> Ooh, that was the one! That was the one, baby! I wanted this fight more than anything! The Sora, the fight pit, or Shulk from Xenoblade! Sora's gonna be in death battle! Yes! Yes! Oh, it's a good day! It's a good day! Oh man, that battle has just gotten so much more amazing. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button to leave a comment over that I'll start to react to in the future. And I will see you guys next time. Later, Sora, baby, Sora!